comic book fans, and welcome to Cammy's Comic Corner. I am your host, as always, Cammy. Now, after a big old week of nothing but Comic Con, I finally get back on the calmer side of things as I just continue on with the regular review show that you all know and love. So, it must be uh, no surprise to you guys that the pick of the week this week is Green Lantern number 33, written by Jeff Johns and art by Ivan Reyes. You know, whenever this book comes up, you, I should just stop picking it. Like, it's just too obvious. This is my favorite character. We all know, we all love, oh, Cammy loves Green Lantern, whatever. But this issue blew me away. It had to be the pick of the week this week. As we follow Hal Jordan, as last we saw him, you know, being pelted by Hector Hammond, by Hector Hammond's mind beams. And then, uh, what did I call? I, I called that Sinestro comes to the rescue. And guess what he does? He comes to the rescue, he beats up Hector Hammond, helps Hal Jordan escape, and then they go to find Avenger's grave, just to say uh, Sinestro wants to pay his last respects. And like a scene from Star Wars, uh, Hal Jordan's ring lights up and their pre-recorded message comes forth to Sinestro, you know. G General Kenobi, uh, years ago you helped my father in the Clone Wars. Not like that. But they got a little backstory of the Manhunters uh, and uh, the rumored uh, Blackest Night prophecy coming true. Sinestro doesn't really believe in it, but you know, after Avin Sur and him were good friends, he kind of does now. Then we find out Atrocitus, the Red Lantern from uh, Sector 666, found William Hand. And William Hand seems to be a quiet young lad and seems to be uh, fascinated with death. And they found him at a funeral home. And so, before Atrocitus can make his move, Green Lantern say, Hey! Not before you go through us. And so, Atrocitus drains their power. And now, we're left with hand-to-hand -hand combat. You know, old style. Fist, fist fighting. Fisty cuts. Whatever. So, we'll have to find out what happens in the next issue. But it's going to be a brawl. So, keep a lookout. Now, on to the Fast Five! Hesh wants some sex! Hesh, get off! My tape's Shut up. playing! Debbie, get down here! First up from Marvel this week, we have Black Panther number 39, written by Jason Aaron. Another! Oh, yeah, anything Jason Aaron that comes out, you know, automatic pick. Anyway, in this issue, we find the Skrulls are planning on invading Wakanda. And if you don't know Wakanda's uh, history and, and fighting wars and whatnot, They've never lost. They've never been defeated. And can, you know why? Because they have all this superior technology, they got manpower, and they got, you know, a little guy named Black Panther, who's pretty, pretty uh, kick-ass, if you ask me. Oh, and then you got Storm, too, but yeah, yeah, lightning, whatever. But in this issue, the Skrulls invade Wakanda. There's a big old brawl. They take out each other's defenses, so Wakanda doesn't have power, the Skrull ship doesn't have power, and it comes down to a battle of wits. They gotta go fight on the battlefield like the Zulus did against the British invasion all those many years ago. But now we get to find out, will Wakanda finally be defeated? Tune in next issue to find out. Next up from Image Comics we have Dynamo 5 number 15. Uh, Maddie, the chief operator and, and wife to the beloved Captain Dynamo, is out cold. And the uh, Dynamo 5 have pretty much been kind of disbanded, except for uh, Scrap. I don't want to say Scrape because there isn't an E at the end of her name, but Scrap, she's still out there beating up bad guys and whatnot because she's always kind of been seen this, as the team leader. So she needs to, you know, feel like she's still fighting, helping civilians. And uh, after fighting all these villains, she realizes she can't do it alone, so she asks for help from four other superhero teammates, making a, another Dynamo 5 team. So that was a very fun issue. I had fun with this issue. Next up from Marvel, we have Thor number 10. Written by good old J. Michael Straczynski. If you like his stuff right now, wait until he starts writing stuff for DC. I, I'm, I'm intrigued. What's he going to write? I don't know. Could be good. But anyway, in this issue, Thor uh, and Balder find out, well, Balder finds out anyway, that he's actually Thor's half-brother. Uh, Thor's daddy, Daddy-O, got a little busy at a party a while back. And Balder was the uh, result of that experiment called Sex. And uh, it comes to, Loki comes to Balder and says, Hey, by the way, you're uh, Thor's half-brother. I don't know why I wouldn't want to tell you, but it's pretty, pretty much Loki making trouble again. Darn that Loki. Next up from DC, we have Joker's Asylum, Two-Face, one shot. And, okay, someone asked me last week, and I couldn't address it on the show because I was too busy with Comic-Con, but they asked how uh, 
Two-Face Year One was, because that came out last week, and then this week we get Joker's Asylum Two-Face. Kind of two-faced out, but, you know, Dark Knight, increased sales, get people interested. Two-Face Year One, it costs like five bucks or something like that, because it's part one of two, and it's ridiculous, uh, the pricing. So, you know, you're expecting a good story. I wasn't impressed with the story at all. If you know the origin of Two-Face, that's basically what that issue was, only you paid five bucks for it, which was kind of a rip-off. No, it wasn't kind of, it was a rip-off. So stay away from that title because, oh, asshole in the face, I was a good lawyer at the, uh, you know, beginning. Just go out and purchase a ticket to The Dark Knight instead. You'll get a much better story. Or you can pick up this Joker's Asylum one-shot and get the same quality for a much cheaper price. In this issue, we don't go through the backstory and origin of Two-Face. We get a nice little one-shot story. Uh, a burn victim survivor comes to counsel uh, Two-Face saying like, hey, you know, I used to be a firefighter, got in this horrible accident. I want to help, you know, come counsel you if you need counseling. Pretty much Two-Face is seeing what he could have been if he turned to the side of good instead of evil. So he doesn't really like that. So he goes and visits the guy, tortures his wife, tor you know, tortures him, and at the end, the story structure was magnificent. It was one of those you choose your own ending. The Joker tells you to take a coin, you flip it, tails, it gets, he dies in the end, the heads, he lives happily ever after. I got tails, and that was a much better ending. But still, it was a very cool issue. I highly enjoyed it, and yeah, if you want that, if you want a two-faced two story, go with that one instead of uh, your one. And finally this week we have Wolverine number 67. And in this issue, it's the continuation of Millar and McNiven's story on Wolverine many years in the future, dri driving along with Hawkeye. Uh, they get jumped by some Ghost Rider. Uh, it's a gang of uh, motorcycle guys with the Ghost Rider's logo and flaming bikes. Hawkeye kills them all with his bows and arrows because, you know, Logan's like, oh, I'm a pacifist. Whatever. You're going to see some claws by the end of the issue. I I'm pretty sure of it. But then they make a stop in Hammer's Fall. Why is it called Hammer's Fall? Because it's at the spot where Thor's hammer fell after the god died. So it's pretty much a big tourist uh, destination. And then Hawkeye finds out that his third wife, one of Peter Parker's uh, children, their daughter, a spider girl, has been captured by the Kingpin, and she is expected to be dead by the morning. So in the next issue, Wolverine and Hawkeye are going to be going to rescue his daughter. Very fun stuff. Uh, I've been loving this book. Wolverine is just a good, solid title. If you want that solid title, and you want the guy who's in everything, get Wolverine. Well, comic book fans, that does it for this week of Kami's Comic Corner. If you want to be our friend, go ahead and go to myspace.com slash Kami's Comic Corner. From there, you can click on that banner and subscribe to us on iTunes or subscribe to the RSS feed. Also, if you want to check out the Comic-Con coverage that I had last week, and I had a show daily with footage and news and reports and contests to contests, go to youtube.com slash Camus Comic Corner. You can find all of them there from Wednesday through Sunday. This has been Camus Comic Corner. I am your host, Cammy. Have a good week. Yeah!